All right, let's see if this works. Look at that. That is so cool. Wow. All right, what the heck are we looking at? This is the demo data set for Azure Digital Twin, a now first class citizen in Azure that lets you combine a whole bunch of concepts into creating these cool data sets that uh, allow for a bunch of utility. It's kind of tricky to combine all those different things together. So let me see if I can talk a little bit about the problem solved by Digital Twins and then we can go into some of the concepts. Uh, so what are things that they do? Well, you create effectively a graph of the different business processes that you have or physical digital representations of physical or virtual objects in your business. So a classic example is an assembly line. Items go through assembly lines. They go through different sectors or segments or machines. You want to track the performance of those machines. You want to track the volumes. You want to see the power utilization, et cetera. You make a digital twin of each one of those machines. You can do all of that in one unified framework. Uh, but you can extend that to things like people. They are also assets and they have actions. So you can do, you know, sales cycle monitoring. Pardon me. Let me put my pen on there. There we go. Now you can see what I'm doing. All right. So you can have like sales cycle monitoring. So a person or a uh, very, uh, or a, a customer that has a lot of different touch points throughout your sales cycle, you can have a, you can have a twin of a high value customer. You can have a twin of your salesperson, your engineer, your architect, et cetera. All those things go on. You can even have, uh, I suppose a, uh, a digital twin of a uh, SOW or a MSA or a document that needs to be revised. There's a bunch of stuff. I mean, there's a certain point of diminishing returns there, but still you can create interfaces for those things. Uh, one that I think is particularly interesting is the idea of going from your uh, digital media to your website assets to conversions. So imagine a situation where you have a twin of you know, display ads to your website that has different pages and assets within those pages and then those lead to sales you can create a relationship to between all those things and be able to monitor performance conversions optimize etc and then of course the example that azure provides where you have the uh, utility resource consumption optimization but what do you ask so isn't that already kind of solved it is. We can do all these things. There is nothing new under the sun with the idea of digital twins. But what it is doing is something cool where it's combining a lot of concepts that we've had difficulty putting together in the past. Uh, primarily, and this is for some of the more program oriented people, uh, it takes concepts from, I would say, domain driven design uh, slash like model view controller. Because a digital twin at its core is an interface. It's just an interface for APIs, for applications, for data to push information to an object that you would call a digital twin. And then once it's there, it interfaces with other things to update databases, update uh, tracking systems, update a time series. Uh, system of data or update other digital twins. So yes, it is at its core a framework, but it is a business process management framework. So you can take those directed acyclic graphs, those workflow management diagrams, any of those things that all your BAs have created or your architects have created. If everyone agrees on that, that now becomes your digital twin model. You've created a unified vocabulary, as Eric Evans would say, based on your already existing business process rules. Now, how do you actually use it? How do you query those things? Well, now we're talking about like GraphQL slash no SQL 
logic, because if you saw that demo that I was doing previously, let me go back up to it. The way I'm interfacing with this digital twin framework is I'm just using a SQL query. So I'm just select star from digital twin where last update time equals so-and-so. It's not one-to-one -one with a traditional SQL, but it's very SQL-like. And these objects, these nodes, are just twins. In this case, we're looking at, uh, what is this? This is an industrial plant. So this represents a plant that has currently has an output of 3,000, where the digital twin extends beyond what we would think of in a traditional integration or tracking or business process management tool. This is a two-way street. It's not just getting updated. It is an interface. So if, say, this application is actually something where I would do this, I would say, well, I need to increase the output of that power plant. I'm going to increase it to 4,000. That interface would update the twin and then push that update to whatever I configured to read it, which would presumably be the power plant, and then it would flow down to all of my other digital twins that read from it. So, okay, I updated 4,000 to here. All right, so now I need to look at, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the area that is consuming these things. Are they using that power? Are they consuming them appropriately? Et cetera, et cetera. And then I would probably be able to bump it back down if I didn't need it. These are the types of things that you can do with Digital Twin. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of opportunity. Uh, in my mind, I feel like it's going to be a great way to back channel governance and master objects and you know change management rules. There's there's a lot of places we can go with this. I'm excited to see what happens. Uh, I don't know if this is another flash in the pan thing, but it'll be uh it'll be cool to see. Uh, I I will also say this this little demo was a bear to set up. If anybody else wants to try it out, feel free to uh, ping me in the comments, and I will uh, give you any pointers. All right. Otherwise, let me know if you have any questions. Look forward to talking to you guys.